but unmute carry ma'am please audio audio ma'am oh please. okay <laughs> yeah from the bottom of my heart i would like to thank dr elizabeth lucas queen dr elizabeth lucas director as you can international uk ma'am it's an excellent message ma'am uh, really uh, youth should be skillful and we have to train them to be on their uh, own and support their younger generation thank you very much ma'am okay thank you. thank you i would like to invite merily her excellency ambassador dr afinita chaitana global commander in chief of unp KFC Bangkok to present your valuable message ma'am i invite you warmly afinita ma'am our excellency afinita ma'am from thailand bangkok uh, do you hear me ah uh, yes ma'am yes ma thank you yes, uh, namaste sawadi ka good evening to excellency eminence lady and gentlemen Myself, Dr. Apinita Chaitana, Global Commander in Chief of United Nations Peacekeeping Force Council Southeast Asia. I'm happy to be here and discuss an upcoming problem of the world unemployment. The solution has worsened so much that people with high degree are on the edge of unemployment due to no job or low pay score. Hello, do you hear me? It's fine. It's clear. It's audible, okay. man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the young generation is hardworking and ambitious. They have great talent, but it become difficult even for the governments to serve to high demand, and this has given more condition to the idea of the best one wins. The popular of educate. People is increasing by its passing day, and the government is unable to employ them at workplace. Say most youth do not have the technical knowledge or practical skill. They are offered their job, so it was perfect that people are become more aware of the solution now, and most of them are getting educated. To secure a better future, one shall have technical skill and knowledge of their study, and can help them in the long run. The change of curriculum by the government will also help to improve this problem. Lastly, I would like to thank you, the audience, for having patients and turning up today. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajalau, who gave me this opportunity. I want to say, the India. I want to pay for all of you, India, my brother and sister. Please stay strong and be safe, stay safe, and everything will be better soon. I hope. Ah. Please, uh, I invite to all of you. We can join some our hand together to working together for the better place. And I hope in the future, whatever can, how can I support to you? I am ready, ka, Doctor Lajal Lau, and happy. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I happy to meet to all of you, my dear Dhamma Bhatta and sister, and my Buddha bless you and God bless you all. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you, Excellency. It's a wonderful support. As you have shown your solidarity to India, as India is in crisis with the pandemic. Thank you very much, Ma'am, for your great support and for the encouragement. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you. I would like to invite gracefully Her Excellency Dr. Bode Pudi Shailaja, Director, Shamala Hospitals, Telangana, India, to express, ma'am, a warm welcome, ma'am, to express your valuable views on this auspicious occasion. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'
addressing the un unemployment. I invite Dr. Shailaja Ma'am. Um, she will join a bit later. Please call the next guest, ma'am. Okay, okay. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to invite Her Excellency Ambassador Dr. Deepthi R. Badoria, Vice Chancellor, Konipa Council, to do your valuable message. Ma'am, welcome, ma'am. Um, please invite Evangelia, ma'am, because these three guests will join a bit later. Please invite oh. Dr. Evangelia. Okay, okay. I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to invite Her Excellency Dr. Evangelia Vasiloka, an international speaker, Grace. Ma'am, a warm welcome. Kindly, we would like to hear your valuable message. Hello, my greetings from Greece. I'm very glad that uh, you have given me the opportunity to be with you today and uh, share my contribution. First of all, I would like to thank all the excellencies I have heard so far. Uh, I'm speechless with all the contributions and the excellent messages they have given to the world. Uh, I should thank them because they expand our horizons and we become more enriched in terms of unemployment matters. Today, I presented the presentation because I would like to visualize certain points and give more practical tips. So allow me to share my screen and please confirm. Ah, you have disabled my screen sharing. So if it is possible to uh, give me access to it. Yes, ma'am, now you can. Okay. Ma'am, you please. Yes. I decided to focus on my talk on the unemployed generation of 2020 pandemic graduates and uh, incorporate a, a few practical tips uh, in order to give a guide how they can get hired. First of all, I would like to say that the coronavirus unemployment has created a tsunami of unemployed people allow me to use some uh, lexical metaphors here in order to um, expand, express uh, my sadness regarding the huge numbers of unemployed young people that um, we see nowadays. All the businesses and most businesses have started their hiring uh, freezes somehow and the job market really suffers. So let's have a look at the pandemic job losses that hit uh, the young generation the hardest. And we talk about the Generation Z. Is it really a lost generation in this toughest job market in decades? Can we really talk about the lost generation or not? Can we really talk about the toughest global market? Because we see that the global economy is experiencing the deepest recession since World War II. There is some background noise. Could you please uh, allow me to talk without background noise? Thank you. My main source has to do with uh, the GEO, the GO banking rates, that uh, is a company owned and operated by Consumer Tracking Corporation, which is a finance website dedicated to connect people Uh, I again request uh, there is background noise. I cannot hear my voice talking. Okay, thank you. As I was saying, the Go Banking Rate, which is a personal finance website dedicated to connect people to the latest information, career insights, the retirement planning, economic trends, and there are more than uh, 100 financial experts and writers and editors and researchers that work towards this goal. I'd like to start with the EPI uh, statistics and talk about the Generation Z's vulnerability according to the Economic Policy Institute, 
let me refer to some statistics because, as I said before, the Generation Z has suffered the most. Compared with the ages 25 and older, Generation Z has always had higher unemployment numbers, according to the Economic Policy Institute. So a year before the pandemic, it was in April and May and June 2019, the Generation Z had an employment rate of 8.4% compared to 2.8% for those 25 years and older. This spring in 2020, after the pandemic hit, the unemployment rate for Generation Z spiked to 24.4%, compared to 11.3% for those ages 25 and older. The unemployment numbers for the Generation Z became even worse for Hispanic people, people of color, and Asian American workers. Uh, it was also found that the Generation Z workers held jobs in the leisure and hospitality industry in 2019, followed by 18.9% with jobs in retail, and approximately 41% of leisure and hospitality jobs were shut down due to the pandemic, while 12.8% of retail jobs were lost. Let's see what experts recruited say, and this is some generic advice in my subsequent slides. I'm going to move on to more practical solutions. They say that it is not necessary to be in an office to work, and that there is a lot of remote online work and it's not possible, if it's not possible to find the young, uh, young people, their dream jobs, they can start by searching for online work. There are recommendations, a lot of recommendations on how they can adjust their mindset. And uh, while I was listening before, I heard a lot about changes, our mentality, their ideology, in order to make uh, all the system work. So it's the way we think. The way we think can control the world. So let's not uh, allow people to think, young people, that all these possible rejections or these uh, problems in the uh, employment sector come from personal rejections. It's just the system that has to be changed and the mentality that has to be changed. Resilience is a key concept in the tough job market. We need to teach them adaptability skills and how to be flexible and resilient, especially we educators. We need to get organized and express uh, our uh, foreground the notion of the updated LinkedIn page with their green profile badge, teach them how they can become professionals and how they can use the social media uh, to their advantage to maximize their chances and make sure that their LinkedIn highlights their accomplishments. To be sure to, to send more than 10 job applications each day and never quit because employers love online job portals. In other words, they need to be proactive and make lists, not just one company, but lists of companies they would like to meet, explore their social media and websites, and set up Google Alerts to continue their social networking. These are some, best, some uh, tips from the best experts regarding uh, the health crisis and how they can help young people uh, land a job. The first comes from Jagoda Wiktsorek, the, the human resources manager at Resume Lab, who says that we need to provide a clear and concise snapshot and tell them that uh, we as educators guide them and tell them that they need to uh, provide their tangible accomplishments. Otherwise, they cannot expect to be reached if they cannot put their uh, expertise and their degrees um, into the, uh, the market agenda. Secondly, they can create a master resume and trim the fat when they apply for a specific job. What does this mean? To make a general CV wouldn't be uh, logical and wouldn't, wouldn't help in that situation. They shouldn't send the same CV for every job application because most companies today use applicant tracking systems and they put candidates on autopilot. These systems rip through the resumes keyword compare them against the job description and score them for relevance. They have to go back to their master resume and keep the things that the job, the specific job they apply is looking for. According to Jason Patel, the founder of Transition, a college and career preparation company, they need to update the resume, their resume and reflect the current climate. For example, are they an education uh, professionals? They need to discuss how they are experienced in e-learning and remote classes and highlight these skills to cope with the new, new normal realities. According to Carol Stiza, the business life and leadership coach, they need to become proficient in using virtual work platforms, learn how companies, big companies work, like um, uh, how they operate the Zoom, 
the free conference calling, the Cisco WebEx, the Google Meet, and get proficient to teach them digital literacy skills. To take online courses, according to the CEO of Class Central, because for those that they have extra time in their hands because they're unemployed, it is a perfect opportunity to sharpen their skills and uh, upgrade their skills. To apply for jobs that are in high demand, according to a career expert at the resume writing company, Zip, uh, Zip Job. There is a huge demand for delivery and healthcare workers and grocery store, as opposed to transportation, hospitality, travel, manufacturing, construction. So they need to focus on specific areas that they are in demand and only to apply to companies that are actively hiring. I would advise, says Dana Case, the director of operations, I would advise job seekers to look through online lists of companies that are hiring right now. And these may include companies that are hiring remote employees. Another uh, important piece of information is that they can create a CV video. They can revolutionize the way job application is done. Uh, when I was uh, doing my MA um, uh, degree, I was advised by my Hellenic American University to prepare my own CV video. And these are just some uh, screenshots from my CV video. And believe me, it helped me a lot. And I had uh, a lot of calls afterwards because they were interested in finding out, apart from the visual material and uh, the, um, the CV that was included, uh, how I could materialize everything that I was showing on the CV video. They should also apply for jobs that closely match their current skill sets and experience. It is important to be realistic about their experience and the skill level. During a crisis, and this is important to for ground, employers tend to be risk averse. They don't like taking risks. So they move forward with a candidate that will require additional training would be hard to justify. They need to apply directly through the company website and to create a three to four slide presentation along with their CVs to state and outline what they can accomplish in the first 30 days, hypothetically, they were hired. Don't focus on the past. We should teach them, focus on creating value immediately because this is what the job market needs. Engage with the goal company's leaders on social media. Yes, the objective is to begin and establish a rapport by following them on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a, an app, a multitude of social media. Let's use them. We can teach them how they can get connected and become a member of the inner circle of their social media tribe and practice doing video interviews. If they want really to land a job interview, they should expect that this should be done by video. This is likely a new skill for them. Teach them these new skills. Teach them how to practice and answer questions that they receive during an interview using video. Now I would like to move on to psychology because the way we think reflects the way we act. And I would like to talk about a psychological perspective that was coined by the motivational psychologist, Gabriel Ettigen, about the mental contrasting. If you have a look at the picture I have incorporated, you see that the, the, the side on the left is black and then the side on the right is more bright, which means that we need to understand that positive thinking alone is counterproductive. Because if we just think positively and we stop there, it's just the fantasy sphere. We need to start praxis and stop dreaming of the perfect career. The fantasies are tricky things. They are elusive things. They can arouse warm emotions. We feel as if we have already achieved our goals. It is good escapism and sabotages our efforts to materialize and achieve success. So the technique of mental contrasting, which is very versatile, can help job seekers and career starters to mobilize their efforts. The acronym is WOOP, which stands for consider your wish, imagine the outcome, accept reality, don't focus only on your wish, identify the obstacle and make a plan. This is just a diagrammatic representation to understand how interrelated these notions are. And we need to teach them how how they can balance as educators the two ways of thinking, the positive thinking and the mental contrasting. Uh, moving on, I would like to talk about the virtual interviews and some words about virtual recruitment because the world is changing. Pandemic changes everything. So what we have so far in mind about the traditional way of employment is, is a myth. 
virtual recruitment is becoming more and more um, dominant. And we need to understand that there are platforms that are synchronous, like phone calls and live video calls, and asynchronous, for example, the recorded videos. It's a form of interviewing that includes sending the applicants predetermined questions, and we as teachers and tutors, we can help them uh, build a good uh, image online and help them with these questions and discuss in class and uh, even in an online meeting how they can be prepared to answer questions like, what is your work culture like? What is your mission statement? How often is a new hire the result of a previous employee quitting? Because we are, they are expected to ask them questions. And this is how they are going to differentiate their sense from uh, the other people, other uh, people that don't have, look, they have the they have the degrees, they have the qualities, but they don't have the mindset. Questions like, why are you leaving your job? Why are, what are your weaknesses? Are they really prepared to uh, address all these questions? It's not just having the degree. It's not just having the chance. It's not just having the creation of a new job, but can we really teach them how they can fight and how they can foreground themselves out of and, and distinguish themselves out of all these people that are around uh, and they're waiting for a job? And especially, can we teach them that there are specific pandemic interview questions that <clears throat> can assist them in successful recruitment? Let me may, name two out of all these. What ways would you communicate with your manager and co-workers in a remote setting? How have you handled the stress of coronavirus? They want to see that they have the adaptability skill and the cooperation skill and all the 21st century skills. So to recapitulate during a COVID situation and even a post-COVID situation, what would be the profile of a successful candidate? Hypothetically speaking, that there is a better job market. And hypothetically speaking, that we have created all these jobs. There are six skills, according to LinkedIn, that uh, graduates, college graduates need to have in mind. Leadership, communication skills, well-developed problem-solving skills, operational excellence, marketing, and customer service. And I will focus on the last one. We think that only communication is important, but they want to see, the recruiters want to see that, can the candidates ensure customer value and customer loyalty, especially now that there are many services that are conducted online without this face-to-face -face element? And I would like to conclude my today's presentation giving a positive message to all the people that are listening right now, to all the people that need, a, that need to be empowered, that for the, especially a message for the educated unemployment, that they need to plan, prepare, and persist, never quit. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, uh, Excellency. Really, it is a wonderful uh, information for the younger generation, the youth, how to prepare themselves for the interview. And uh, video interview is a really a very important uh, topic. You have said, man, it's very important. Uh, they have to be get used to, and they need to prepare questions in advance, and they need to learn how to answer in a better way. Uh, so this is uh, all, uh, uh, along with the communication skills, if they are active and uh, be very positive thinking, not to be in fantasy, and they have to look at the reality, and they will be placed comfortably. Really, thank you very much, ma'am. It's a really wonderful message. Thank you, Excellency. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Amy Ellen Rajalakshmi, ma'am, CEO, Millennial Fly from United Kingdom. Dr. Amy Ellen Rajalakshmi, ma'am, Her Excellency. Amy Ellen Rajalakshmi, ma'am, CEO, Millennial Fly from United Kingdom. Will you please unmute? Yes, just she is entering into Yemi Alan Rajalakshmi, ma'am, CEO, Millionaire Fly Emmy from United Kingdom. Ma'am, will you please unmute your mic and uh, we are repeating Emmy Alan Rajalakshmi, ma'am. Hi, am I audible? 
Dr. Raja. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please carry on. Okay. Hi. Namaste and good morning and good evening and good afternoon wherever we are in the part of the world. In uh, creating a better, peaceful world, we have to train our mind to be stronger than we ever thought possible. Stay strong in every situation in your life and train your mind to see the good in everything that we see. Without labor, nothing prosper. Happy Labor Day and a great day, a blessed day to our uh, Her Excellency Dr. Queen Dr. Tamara, Her Excellency Queen Nadia, Her Excellency Queen Ambassador Elizabeth Lukars, and all my respected Her Excellency and our great man behind the screen, Dr. Raja Rao, the International Diplomatic Organization for Development and Peace, the Life Foundation, the American International Foundation Federation USA, the World Peace Commission, and Telanga Kalaprit. I, Dr. Amy Allen, the CEO, the director, founder of Millionaire Fly Amy, Guinness World Book Record holder, international best-selling author, and also a life coach. I'm so happy and grateful and blessed for addressing the Unemployment International Virtual Conference today from the United Kingdom. As we focus, how do we make the new economy work better for everyone, not just for those at the top? As, as to the worst economic crisis of a lifetime, we are in the midst of the longest crisis in our history. As um, it's been addressed by Her Excellency Queen Nadia, it's, um, it's the same time of our economy continues to go through profound changes long before the Great Recession hit. It changed to the profound where even folks had jobs. Even when the economy is growing, it's harder for the working families to pull themselves out of the poverty to the richness. Harder for the young people to start out on careers. And though it was also tougher for the workers to retire when they want to. That is the big part of the reason a lot of families, a lot of working families are feeling anxious. It is often the fundamental belief that everybody who works hard should be able to get ahead. That is why we are all here working so hard to give families more opportunities and more securities by, by creating more good jobs invest in our middle class families and help working people excel and also new business entrepreneurs. And I believe this is what it is all about, filling up the gaps. This is why I also believe that we got to take steps to improve our unemployment system, to make sure that we help those who need our helping hand. It is actually a way to give the families some stability and encourage folks to regain confidence in the life as um, we are all here not only to talk about unemployment i believe that we also need to add in the values of re-employment because we all can work best when everyone has the opportunity when everyone has security and when everyone can contribute to their country and to the world that we love that is how we make sure hardworking families and individuals can get ahead and rise above. And I believe that is why we are all here to put our effort to make this life a better place for the future. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, Excellency, for your wonderful message. We all will be noting. Uh, it's my privilege to invite Her Excellency Dr. Safa Hama Hame de Paris, France, International Ambassador for Sustainable Development and CEO of the Board of Directors of the International Center of Diplomatic and Strategic Studies to do studies. Ma'am, I would like to invite you, ma'am. We are all here to. Uh, uh, to look at your message and kindly give us some precious inputs. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for the uh, great speeches and thank you for the participating of uh, particip the participation of everyone. Thank you for organizing this uh, uh, event uh, uh, in this special and particular date, uh, May the 1st, uh, the day that the whole world celebrate uh, the hard work and the hard workers. Uh, I am Al uh, uh, Safa Al Hamaide, and thank you so much. You did a great effort to pronounce very good my name. I know it's difficult because it is originally from Jordan. I am Jordanian, living in France since nearly 30 years now, and I am uh, a specialist of the uh, social uh, enterprises, big and small social enterprises as, as a main tool of uh, 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 the uh, development, the uh, sustainable development uh, in each uh, society. I want, we are uh, all together today discussing a very important uh, subject, the unemployment. Everyone is saying that the, prob the reason, the uh, يعني, original reason uh, behind the unemployment is the economic uh, crisis and the problem, the, the problems uh, that we are facing, especially nowadays since a, a little bit more than one year, we are facing with Corona virus with COVID-19, uh, a, a huge restriction in the economy globally uh, uh, in the whole world. It's indeed the one or the main and the major reason. But I want today to uh, bring up another reason that is a very important reason in my point of view. I think that we have a, a big gap between the education, the educational system and the, the market, the needs of the market. Today, everyone wants to have uh, uh, bachelor, magister, uh, PhDs, degrees, and we don't look at the need of the market, the real need of the market. Or either, this is a point, and another point also is the uh, gap between the programs of the education that are accredited in the universities and the schools they are very far from the need of the market, the real need of the market. Also, there's a, a, a huge number of uh, jobs and titles of jobs that are in, uh, in their uh, voice to disappear. We will not be anymore needing some specialists, but others on the other side, there's other uh, uh, specialists uh, and other uh, uh, needs are uh, coming up and new titles and new jobs are opening uh, to the uh, whole world. But here is the gap, the education system in a lot of countries and a lot of societies are not following the update of the real need of the market. I'm here to uh, uh, clear and point this uh, um, uh, uh, gap and say that we can actually make a, a, a link and create a, a, a bridge between the education and the, need, the real need of the market and the real jobs that are proposed and uh, needed in, uh, uh, to, to create um, a development, a sustainable development in uh, the society. How can we do this? I think the first uh, evident uh, uh, um, possibility that's open to us is to invest and to invest and to invest more and more in the education. And not, not only investing in the education, like in a, in a, in a way not to, uh, studied and not organized, we have actually to invest in the studies that make the bridge and the link between the market and the economic market and the educational system. How can we adapt all our educational system to be um, uh, a real gate uh, bringing up to this market, to this economic market, uh, individuals, 
with the specialist with the uh, needs that cover uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the need of the market and bring uh, uh, this rule and bring this um, uh, possibility to the to to develop and the sustainable development uh, uh, become a reality in the society then we have to invest in studying uh, uh, and following the updates uh, all we need is to concentrate on the education in the, in the, in the educational uh, uh, system. All we need is to uh, train and to uh, uh, be uh, bring more awareness uh, in the uh, uh, brain of these students who are following only uh, some specialists uh, like doctors or engineering, and they are not looking to other specialists that can be more helpful to create this uh, economic development in their countries. We can also uh, uh, make bridges between our system, uh, educational system and other educational systems in uh, abroad, uh, in, in the countries that they are more developed uh, in Europe, or in uh, uh, USA or uh, uh, in, in, uh, in other countries that they are like Finland known uh, by far that is one of the best or uh, the best educational system in the world. We can uh, make this bridge learn from their experience, but at the same time we take this experience and we arrange it uh, by a way that can be best for our country, for our needs. What I want to say today that uh, we might claim uh, extra uh, salaries, we might claim extra uh, rights for the workers, we might claim uh, extra uh, uh, um, uh, 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 respect for the for the hard workers. But uh, all with, I, I agree with you all about all of these points. But I want to add that one of the main and major rights for the workers is the possibility and the capacity to learn. We need to build the capacity of the whole society. By far all the uh, um, uh, levels of education, starting from the basic education, which is very important, we know that the person is built and created and uh, uh, finished between zero and six years old. Then this three years of kindergarten, this, this uh, basic education is very important. We need to uh, uh, invest in this uh, period of education in this level of education and to continue investing in the levels that are following. We need to rediscuss all our educational system in a way that can be um, uh, 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 the person uh, going uh, out of this educational system can bring a flow of knowledge and of development to our society. And uh, respecting by this, the right, uh, one of the ma major rights of uh, the workers is to uh, bring his capacity to be better built and, uh, and to open him, widen the possibility to widen his uh, uh, horizon of knowledge and to have more experiences uh, with, which the, with, with, with which he can um, uh, have a better position, he can do better his job and he can uh, uh, bring more and more efficacy, efficiency to the uh, position that he is doing today, or even open new doors for him to, to uh, find for himself a position and a better job. With this uh, uh, awareness that I want to, uh, with this message today, I want to bring, uh, uh, to make the link uh, uh, very clear between uh, the economic development and the worker and the educational system. I hope that everyone can, uh, uh, that I made myself clear and I, I can buy your, um, uh, by your voice, um, uh, bring uh, this right uh, uh, up to the uh, world, uh, the whole world and claim that we have the right to build better our capacity and to widen our horizon of knowledge. 
Thank you so much. And I hope that we can uh, bring more development and more peace and more love to our countries by respecting one of these major rights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency. It's a wonderful message, especially the word which you have said, that statement has attracted me a lot, ma'am. Really, the youth has to understand that they have to choose the different path where they get the career opportunities or more. But many of the students flow in a as if as to the wind that everyone want to have either engineering or uh, medicine, but no one is looking at other career opportunities. So if they concentrate on their interest, their desire, if they really look at what they want, what is the desire they have, what they want to uh, build up their future, if they look at definitely uh, there will not be any kind of uh, high competition and everyone will be placed very comfortably. Really, thank you very much, ma'am, for the wonderful message. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. And ex excuse my English. I'm much more French speaker than English, but I try to bring uh, up very clearly my message. Thank you really that great. you understood <laughs> my message. Thank hey, you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Now